My normal, my normal sort of voice is deeper than what it normally is, which is ironic because a lot of times I play a lot of hyper, high-pitched people. Yeah, it is, we're anime, so, <laughs> so we got a lot of that. For some reason, I tend to play very, um, very sweet yet aggressive people. So far, Nebraska has been great. Uh, once I finally got here, <laughs> we had we had a little bit of a 22-hour journey to get here, but it was worth it. So I'm very happy about that. This is my first time being out over here, and it's been a lovely show so far. Most of our panels have been like group actor panel questions, which has been great. I think that um, the today we had a really good one in the afternoon, which was a lot of fun. They, it, it, it's just fun being up there with everybody and, and getting to work from, you know, from, from Keith to Kara to everybody else who's out there. So it's sort of fun doing that. And I like that they sort of ask random questions sometimes. Like today was our favorite cookie and um, mine was a squid game cookie. So we're just, I'm going on a theme here right now, but uh, we got one on the airline. We got one on the airline. It, was, it wasn't exactly, it wasn't like super wafer thin, but it was like a really flat sugar cookie. And it was, you know, like a big circle, like about this big. And that's when I knew the flight was going downhill though. So I was like, this is, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know my shape. I don't know what's happening, but I just know that getting this cookie on the plane is, this is not good. So luckily we got through. Yeah, so that's, that's what I would say. Today was fun. It's fun because they sort of just like, we talk half about what we're doing, but also half just about really fun things. So. Uh, as far as attending conventions, it's for me uh, it, throughout the whole career, this is the time that I actually get to interact with fans. So it's nice to kind of meet people who are watching it because a lot of times you're doing, you're doing a lot of the work, but you're sort of in a vacuum. And especially now, like especially like COVID and post COVID times, sometimes you're spending all your days working and you're in your home. So you're not even leaving. But this is the first time that you really get to sort of interact with fans, talk about who's watching and, and you get to kind of like, have a sense of how it's how it's touching people or who's or you know who you're who you're working with and stuff so it's great <laughs> um, I will tell you the second most memorable thing sure, sure. Uh, just because um, but uh, I mean I've signed some weird things I think I've signed I've signed uh, people have asked me to sign them. I think I've signed some shoes. I did sign um, someone for me. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really cool is they made a, I signed a giant um, sort of light from Slayers. So they had built the whole thing. So they had us sign it, which was super, like that was super cool. Someone else had made like a, like a, an Amy's hammer thing for me. So that was a lot of, a lot of signing weapons, I think, you know, like not, not real ones, not real ones, but actual, but like a lot of signing, like beautiful crafts that people have done. So that stuff is really cool. And then, you know, you get some of the stranger, stranger ones, but, but those, yeah, those have burned their holes out of my mind. It's good. <laughs> I have I have different um, different answers to this because there are some shows that I have done that you get to be really sort of emotional and go into the the work and 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 you feel like you vibe with the character. I was lucky enough. Um, there's a lot of a lot of characters that I've spent a lot of time with that I really really enjoyed. There's some fun ones like doing Vernon recently is that's fun. Those are that's a good time. But I also spend a lot of time with Pokemon. And for me, like the show, the way that I feel about it with the acting, it's not just creating the character. To me, it's also, um, because I act, but I also direct on the project too. So it's about, it's sort of about getting people to understand their emotions. So I feel like is when you're acting and you get a sense of that, you start to understand the character, you're helping, like you process and you sort of understand what they're going through. And that kind of also helps you figure out like what you're going through. That's. I, I like to think of it that way, is like when someone is watching it, you're also understanding and learning stuff about yourself. So I think it's important, it's sort of like an important way to like come to terms with your feelings. So that's, yeah, so I love creating characters. I love, you know, I mean, I love, um, I love comic stuff, like I said, like the, like Merlin and things like that, that's fun. But I like when you're able to sort of process and bring that stuff to life. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, and I think that that's one of the things that's when it, when you're the most natural in what's going on, you discover things that you hadn't even thought. You're like, oh, I didn't even realize like this is, 
this, I'm reacting to this, I'm doing this. And it's, yeah, and you, you sort of feel those feelings. And I think that that's, that's, that's something that I love about acting as well. For me, for everyone, it's different. I just moved to uh, LA. So a lot of my stuff is all like vocal, <laughs> vocal warmups. Uh, you have the sense, you already have your character, you have all that, but it is dry, dry in LA. I was an East Coaster, okay? There was, it, there was like water in the air. So every morning I have to, I, um, you stretch out, like work out, stress your body. You're like, ooh, 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 do a whole bunch of singing warmups. I sang, uh, I sang for years. I sang uh, show tunes, all sorts of other stuff and jazz. So I'll go through a whole bunch of scales and levels and stuff like that. Make sure you have breath control. My neighbors, they, uh, especially now, because a lot of stuff is going on at home. They're like, we keep hearing little kids coming out of your apartment and we thought it was really weird, but now that we know what you do, it's okay. I'm like, thanks, thanks. So, which was fine, because there, there was a one point we came out and everybody was sitting by the pool. This was post COVID and they're like, what, what, do you, what do you do in there? And I'm like, can you, can you hear me? They're like, sometimes. Sometimes we hear you like doing warm ups or we hear little kids and then sometimes we don't hear anything and it's very strange. And I was like, good, as long as you don't hear me like screaming in the booth like and doing like attacks, I'm okay with that. But a lot of it is vocal warm ups. Um, people don't realize, like I, I also taught, I taught voice and stuff while I was out in uh, New York for a while. And uh, the body is super important. But in, in different climates, if it's super, super dry, like you wind up drinking a lot of tea, warming up. There's like vocal straws sometimes that people use. There's a whole bunch of different techniques, but I spend a lot more time just actually warming up my voice and different areas in the voice and singing is perfect for that. I am lucky enough when I, when I moved and when COVID started, I was also I was also an engineer and director. I came in, so I had a lot of knowledge for a lot of other actors. They had to learn a lot of the programs, learn how to mic. There was a lot more. I'm used to running a board and, and doing all these things at the same time. It still didn't prepare you because there's lags between people talking to each other. So people will say things. Sometimes you get the picture totally. Sometimes you don't. People don't realize, it, it is, it's very easy now, like if you know somebody or you, you get a good rapport, it's great to, you, you eventually get that feeling, that give and take that you have between the director, the actor, and the engineer. But um, there's a lot that you get being in a room, sitting down and like talking and seeing somebody or body language that something happens. We take a lot of that from the screen as well, but it's weird being in your home with the cats pawing on the door <laughs> and um, undoing everything inside of the box. And I know a lot of people, especially in LA, it's been super hot. So a lot of times you're sweating. It's like a little sauna. Uh, I, that's what I like to think of it as. Everybody's like, it's super hot. I'm like, no, I'm getting a facial while I work. It's really great. <laughs> I'm like, it's a steam room. It's perfect. But, um, but the trade-off is that you don't have, uh, you don't have the, there's something that happens when you're in the room with somebody that you don't necessarily have. And there's like a delay of technology and getting used to that. So there's a lot more patience that you have to have. And there's a lot more like dials and, and things that you have to work on to, to, to sort of use and that you're not normally handling when you're an actor in the booth. As an actor, most of the people, you're turning your knobs, you're working your gain, making sure your volume is set. A lot of stuff that, that normally you would just depend on the engineer for, but you have to kind of do that. And the engineer is wearing like 6,000 hats. Engineer during COVID has taken on stuff that you can't even imagine. Like they're, they're the last person because oftentimes you're, I'm here, I'm in my home, the director is somewhere else and the engineer is somewhere else. So you think you're seeing this, maybe something drops out on the connection. Uh, you hope, like you'll, you'll watch it and it'll come out three different ways depending on your internet speed that day. <laughs> so you hope that you're doing everything. You depend on the director for the performance and then now more than ever, you're, you're really dependent on the engineer to make sure that they're the ones who are putting everything in the right spot. Because you can do that. Normally when you're in the booth, you know you see it, you've got it, it's all set. Here, it's the same thing but um, technology changes it in a way. So we're all doing technical things that we wouldn't normally have done. You can't see my big smile underneath my shiny mask. Uh, we're talking about this this morning. 
my normal, my normal sort of voice is deeper than what it normally is, which is ironic because a lot of times I play a lot of hyper, high-pitched people. It is, we're anime, so, <laughs> so we got a lot of that. For some reason, I tend to play very, um, very sweet yet aggressive people, you know? Like Amy, we had Lena, she had her size. I have Burning, who is now, like, she's like, I feel like she's like the older version of those ladies. And uh, so I have that, and then I have this other brand of sort of like, like um, softer ingenues that were started with like, like um, uh, Serenity or Azaline. I know like in Slime, I play uh, the Demon Lord Frey and she's sort of like a mix between of like, like she's a very soft kind of in control like adult and so it's very cool. So those are the two sides. Either I'm, either I'm, I'm very soothing or I'll probably hit you over the head with something. Those are, that's it. Those are my extremes. <laughs> One end or the other. Either I will soothe you or I will hurt you. I'm sorry. That's what I got. <laughs> but it's funny because some people know me solely as like these super high, like very, very hyper people. And then they'll see me do this like, oh, wow, that was crazy. And then the people who know me like this are like, OK, now I'm frightened of you. <laughs> um, you can see right now there's um, I've got a bunch of stuff going on. We've got on Netflix. You can hear me in obviously in Pokemon and Shaman King. There's a bunch of things on there. Funimation, um, we have uh, My Hero. We just streamed the last episode of that. Slime uh, is going to be coming up. So that's live now. And you can also hear me on Crunchyroll. Uh, we just, I just finished recording, and it's still coming out, is Battle Game in Five Seconds with a character named Mion on there. So there's a, And then there's a couple of things coming out soon. So yeah. So see, he just did a thing over there. That's because he didn't know. Probably knew my, my lower voice is not the high-pitched libel to hit you in the head with something. That's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, that's a fun show. Battle Game in Five Seconds is fun. Watch it. It's got a little bit of a Squid Game vibe, but we're good. <laughs> this, is, this has been super fun. It's been fun coming out to uh, see the shows. There's a lot of stuff that I have that sort of has re sort of come out, like Yu-Gi-Oh has been on and, and a bunch of these. So I would say check those out too if you haven't watched the old school. There's a bunch of old school coming back. So I'm happy to be in both new and old school. So it works out. <laughs>